Hey folks, Coach Johnson here. Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite topics in the whole world, and that's Krav Maga. So let me give you a quick definition of what Krav Maga is, and I'm going to talk about where I think it fits into the grand scheme of martial arts in the world, etc. So if you did not know, Krav Maga is, was originally basically what the IDF, the Israeli Defensive Forces, used for their hand-to-hand -hand combat and their um, combat in close quarters, or CKB, close quarter battle, if I remember that right. Uh, that's kind of a term used around the world. And its initial intention, and it still is today, is designed to get people with l maybe not a lot of athletic ability to a relatively high level of skill and self-protection in a short amount of time. And that's the overlying principle, at least for me, of what Krav Maga is all about. So in my personal history, I was a traditional martial arts instructor. I taught Taekwondo, and I also was teaching some Jiu-Jitsu. And I really wanted a a platform or I really wanted a course in my in my school that was really just pure self-defense uh, didn't have the um, n fanciness of traditional arts and, and there's nothing really wrong with that it's just a kind of a different flavor and so um, I toyed with the idea of putting together something of my own for my own experiences and I ended up coming across Krav Maga and uh, I went to the at the time the LA Center was uh, kind of the main place in the United States to find it to be able to teach it um, if you weren't already a member in there. And uh, I went there several times and actually watched classes, talked to the folks that taught it. I really wanted to make sure it was a good vibe and good fit for what I was looking to do. And I ended up doing the course. And in 2001, I went through my first certification to teach. It was a, lot, a very eye-opening experience. So in my mind, Krav Maga is designed to be a no frills kind of approach. Um, and it's very specific, generally speaking, to handling uh, relatively high-level threats. So although there are control holds and techniques in, in Krav Maga, most of the time they're, they're not that prevalent. It's, you know, like someone's going to punch you, someone's going to choke you, someone's going to grab your hair, someone's got a gun in your face, someone's going to knock you to the ground and, and you know, get on top and start punching you. So that's kind of what Krav Maga uh, handles. Um, so that is my personal love of it. I love the fact it's practical, it's simple, and it's evolving. So the, some of the Krav Maga that I teach and train in now is, is different in response to what I learned 20 years ago. And some of it has just been um, a different approach. Some of it has just been like, hey, we found a way that it has a, more, a higher effective rate. No technique is going to work 100% of the time. And most techniques will work some of the time so it's really a balance of finding of you know what the answer to the problem is that's the most effective and there's there's, there's going to be some variance depending on like the size and skill of the attacker the size and skill of the defender how many attackers the environment is it light outside is it dark outside are you uh, inebriated are you lucid so the cool thing about Krav Maga training is, is we, we kind of handle all this different variables. We want to make sure it's we're, we're doing a lot of different things and make sure that the student learns the basic mechanic in a very static or laboratory kind of a fashion. But then we're going to challenge him or her and give them variables um, that will make the technique probably more difficult to execute. And that's also what makes the class really, really fun is if you, um, you know, are not always knowing exactly what's going to happen. <clears throat> For example, if I do a Muay Thai class, or if I'm training, I, I pretty much know there's going to be some kicking and punching, and we'll be hitting pads, or we'll do some sparring drills, working partner drills, and that's cool. Um, with Krav Maga, it could be totally different every day. And I, I could teach the same techniques uh, one week to the next and have a whole different set of variables and drills. So it, it makes it really, really fun. That's my opinion. Obviously, it's biased since I've been teaching Krav Maga for 20 years. Um, but for self-protection, that is how we run it. Now, most Krav Maga schools that are, that are decent are going to also do sparring, and they're also going to do you know, unscripted, unchoreographed responses. For example, let's say I'm working on a choke defense, um, and the, you know, we do a technique, and the technique has me release the choke, and I go to a clinch and do knees, or I punch the face or I do a takedown or whatever it is. As you get better at the technique, let's say I, I do the choke defense and as I start to execute the technique, maybe the attacker switches it to a bear hug or a hair grab 
or maybe they let go of my neck and try to punch me. So then I have to then modify my response to what my partner is doing. That's where it should go. A lot of schools never get that far. Um, the Krav Maga school and otherwise. Any self-defense program should have these kind of protocols. Not, Krav, Krav Maga is not the only version of self-defense on the planet. And again, it's evolving, it's adaptable, and you might have two Krav Maga schools that have a slightly different response to the same threat. Doesn't mean they're both bad. For us, in my point of view, I look at which one has the highest rate of success when tested under the most severe uh, resistance and aggression. Because if you're attacked by someone who intends to do you harm, there's going to be a lot of aggression. That's kind of a hallmark of an assault, of uh, aggravated assault. All right, so that's a little bit of a take on Krav Maga, why you might find it interesting, or why you might not want to ever do it. So, Because if you're doing self-defense, people are going to touch you, and they're going to simulate uh, aggressive behavior. So for some people, they are not interested in it at all. Totally understand that. But for me, I want to teach the best, most realistic self-defense I possibly can, and I want to keep it very, very simple. Um, that's how I do it. That's how we roll. So this is Coach Jay out. And I uh, hope you find this content useful and valuable. If you do, give me a thumbs up. And if you uh, would like to share it, that'd be fantastic. And I would certainly hope that I've earned a subscription because it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. But it helps us out a lot. All right. It allows us to keep bringing content like this to you guys so you have some fun and, and hopefully learn something. All right. Talk to you later.